All right, so this tutorial is going to go through Telegraph, InfluxDB, and Grafana. So this is going to be pretty straightforward. First things first, you're going to want to download Telegraph. So for those of you guys who don't know what Telegraph is, um, really quick, basically what Telegraph is, is it is a open source ingestion agent is what we normally tend to call it. So Telegraph can take data from things like the web, sensors, other cloud data sources. There's about 300 plus plugins for this. So I would definitely check out, um, you know, you can go basically to here and you can see a long list of the plugins. These are just a few examples here, but there is a full list. I just, you're going to have to go to a different part of the website to see it. But basically from there, you have things like input, which is what most people do. They input the data. Then you have things like processes, which will transform, decorate, and filter it. Things like aggregates, which can do mean, min, and max. And then finally, outputs. You can output this to things like InfluxDB Cloud or open source, into a, just a file, into Kafka, and into basically whatever else is available as an output plugin. So that's basically how Telegraph works. Like I said, there's quite a large variety of Telegraph plugins. A lot of these are also supported by the, um, you know, like the Cisco plugin is probably semi-supported by Cisco itself. So basically a lot of these plugins are supported. Here we go. This is the full list. A lot of these plugins are supported by the companies that they come from. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So yeah, you can do things like ecosystems, observability, systems in general, which is going to have a lot of options. For reference, for this one, we're just going to be doing what we call system. Uh, and by that, I mean the system being my computer, basically, because I'm not currently running any um, any of these uh, to, to warrant using a Telegraph plugin for them. But basically, those are all the options that you can see. There's lots of information on getting Telegraph set up and such. But the first thing we're going to start with is downloading it. So you can go ahead and do things like, you know, I'm going to do Mac OS Brew because I'm running on a Mac. You're welcome to use any of the other ones that work for you. Okay, this is now downloaded and I really quick want to mention the fact that I'm going to be using InfluxDB Cloud Serverless for this. Uh, when you go to the Influx Data GitHub, you will see that we have a few different versions. As of the making of this video, we don't yet have an InfluxDB V3 that is in um, uh, basically ready to be used. It's not in beta or anything like that. It's currently being tested and is under active development. If you come here, you'll see people on the V3 branch working on it. But other than that, you have also your options of V1 and V2. Uh, but for me, at least, I'm just going to use Cloud Serverless because it's free. It doesn't cost any uh, money to use. There's no minimums or you don't have to give a credit card or anything like that. And in general, it's just really simple to use because it also has a great UI built into it. So when I'm all logged in, this is basically what I will see. So I'll see the, well, actually, technically, I'll see this. This is the landing page that you will arrive on. You can see here that you can do things like manage your database, add data, query, visualize, and alert. So what we're going to do is we're first going to create a bucket. So a bucket is basically just a place that you store your data. It's just a database for all intents and purposes. The reason we call it a bucket is because it comes with something called a retention policy, which is basically how long your bucket will hold your data before it then goes on to delete it. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and set my bucket to 24 hours. I'm going to go ahead and call it system CPU bucket. And because it's alphabetical, I'll see it right there. Perfect. So now I'm going to go into sources. And within our sources, you can see quite a few of the Telegraph plugins. It will not be every single one of them, but it will be most of them, or at the very least, the most commonly used. So from there, I can go ahead and collect on the system input plugin. So this is pretty straightforward. Basically, if you give it no configurations, it will just collect all of the metrics off your uh, computer, which will be things like uh, your CPU, the users, the load, the uptime. Uh, basically, the example output will look something roughly like this. So that's what I'm expecting to get. This is great to get started on for um, for Telegraph because anyone can use it. As long as you're running on a computer, you could definitely use this uh, plugin. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit uh, use this plugin and you can put add to an existing configuration or for me, I'm going to create a new configuration. I'm just going to call it CPU system and I'm going to select my system CPU bucket. From here, you can see my configuration file. I can describe it. Just a quick test. I cannot spell this morning. 
There we go. Just a quick test. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and save and test that. So then I'll get my token, which will allow me to actually write into my bucket. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in my terminal. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, run the following command to start my telegraph agent. And as you can see, it's starting to run up. Yep, you can see some of the loaded inputs. I have no aggregators or processors. And my current loaded output is influxdb underscore v2, which is just going into the, I know it's a little bit confusing with all the versioning, but just know it's going into my serverless account. So yeah, then I can go and explore in my data explorer my bucket. So I've selected system CPU. I've selected system. It will automatically go to an interval of one hour. And I'll go ahead and pull this up. I can go ahead and see all of my values that are coming in off my laptop. And basically, that's how you set up Telegraph to run. Also, let's actually really quick take a look at that Telegraph config file now that it's all done. So basically, we also technically, this is this is all pre-populated. It's a configuration for the Telegraph agent. And one of the things it's telling us is that it's data collecting in intervals of 20 seconds. This is saying always collect basically on the rounded up value. We have metric batch sizes. We have a buffer limit if it needs it. We basically have all these different configurations for our file. And one of the things that we have also configured is our output here. So the output basically says where the data is going to go to. The influx token is a variable that we've already exported into the command line. We have our URLs, which is the same one that's currently in my account. And then we have the bucket that we're sending it to and the organization. And then these are just more options if you want to use them basically. But for right now, this is a pretty straightforward uh, setup. So yeah, the agent is just the input agent, output agent, and then finally the inputs.system, which would be where we would put configurations if we desire to uh, configure this in any way, shape, or form. And you can also download this config file. So you could go ahead and create it here. And instead of running it like in the command line like I'm doing, you could run it somewhere else basically like in a, you know, in a dockerized container or just on your own cloud account, whatever it might be, you can go ahead and set that up. You'll see within the telegraph tab, so you got your sources where you can see the full list, you have your telegraph tab where you can see your current configurations, and then you have your buckets. And if you went to API tokens, you would also see the API token that it created for me. Now, one thing to note though, is that uh, tokens basically disappear after they're created. So uh, if you like lose your token, um, you'll have to go back and recreate one. So like, for example, if you went here to the setup instructions, it would tell you the same that you'll have to generate a new API token. And I do just want to really quick show what this might look like in a more intense configuration file with a lot more options. So for example, and just a reference here, I don't know Docker um, super well, but I basically know the gist of how it works with the telegraph config. And you can see here that you have a lot of different options on whether you want to include or exclude things, your timeouts, just basically the kind of, this is basically you allowing yourself to edit the kind of data that you expect to get in and also add things like tag values and such, which will help, you know, you make more sense of your data a little bit easier. So you can see here also all of the metrics that you're going to receive as both tags and fields. I never explained this for this video, but tags are basically things that you would query on more often. Uh, you can think of that as like your main data set. Like for example, it probably isn't uncommon for you to want to know which engine host is having problems. So I wouldn't be shocked if you might ask a question like, in the past five minutes, give me any engine host that has an overload of 100% or something like that. Uh, and then fields are more like metadata, like there's still data that you want to be able to read and stuff like CPUs, containers running, containers stopped, etc. But they are the secondary information and not so much the information that you're going to always be querying on. That doesn't mean you can't query on them. You can obviously say something like in the past five minutes, how many uh, containers are currently stopped, how many are false or true on that. But these do tend to be uh, data sets that you don't query quite as much on. And then you also have things like your Docker data and your Docker metadata measurements. In general, this Docker one, for example, is very advanced. Like there are a lot of options to configure for this because it's been, you know, it's it's very popular. That would <laughs> That's honestly why it is. And so you can see down here an example output of what this would end up looking like, which yeah, is a lot of information. And if I was running a Docker container, I would be going over that one, but I just wanted to give the gist of how that works.
So we've now done two things already. We've got our data into Influx, we've got Telegraph running. Now let's go ahead and hook this up to Grafana. So within Grafana, you're just gonna go to the left-hand side and you're gonna click on Data Sources. And then you're going to click on Add New Data Source, which for me was down here. Then you're going to go ahead and hopefully name your data source. So it's not just like InfluxDB-1 or whatnot, but I can say something like System CPU, so I know what I'm getting here. Now, this is going to depend on which kind of version you're on, but basically the rule here is that if you're on version one, you use InfluxQL uh, version two, and technically an older version of version one, you can use Flux. And for me, I'm gonna use SQL because that's the one where uh, I'm already currently on because I'm in cloud serverless. Then you're going to go ahead and give it your URL. And it's not going to be your full URL. Uh, you're going to go ahead and take uh, everything off after the slash there. So it's going to look like this. Then you're going to give it the database name, which again is just your bucket, and the token that you can use for reading this out. Yeah, so I'm going to create a new token here. It's going to be a custom token where I just go into my system CPU and I can just go ahead and call this um, system test token because I'm going to come back and delete this after I'm done. Oh. I'm going to go ahead and grab this, keeping in mind that your token will disappear after you have uh, used it. All right, great. So now that I've got my token, I had to create a new one. I originally tried to use the one that I already had for Telegraph, but it did not work. Uh, basically, the gist here is pick the query language based off the versioning you're using, put in your URL, whether you're hosting it yourself or running on cloud, go ahead and give it your database name, give it a token that at least allows it to read, doesn't have to allow it to write, and then go ahead and save and test. Awesome. So now that we've done all that, we can go ahead and build a dashboard off of this. So we'll start by adding a quick visualization, and it will ask us uh, which, which basically... Um, input we want to use. I'm going to click InfluxDB System CPU. I'm going to collect my system table and I'm going to ask for, let's see here. I'm going to go into here into code, see if I can fix it. There we go. So by selecting all, I can see my data up there. Yeah, I can see my number of CPUs. I can see my uptime. Perfect. So I must have just selected something where I just didn't quite have data right there, or I just need to keep going. Sometimes you'll have to switch between the builder and the code. There we go. Both uptime and time. There we go. From our system where the time is basically the past six hours because that's the range it's doing. I can go ahead and knock this down to 15 minutes. There we go. That's going to look a lot more reasonable. And you can see that my computer is uh, going up and up on the uptime, which makes sense. We can also, I can really quick go into here and kind of get an idea of what my data looks like. Okay, so I can see here that I have things like the load ones, the five. Yeah, I can probably go ahead and grab some of those values. So for this, it would normally be something like load one, and then you would also pick your time column. And that would basically run your query. Right now though, I have to come in here and go ahead and delete those duplicate uh, brackets. And there we go. Now we have a little bit more of an interesting graph. So in Grafana, what you would normally do is you would uh, name something like uh, this panel here, we might call it load one. And then from there, we would go ahead and save this dashboard. Make sure to give it a name. And obviously you can go forward and create as many uh, Grafana panels as you would like. This is, like I said, just a pretty quick, simple, um, demo tutorial here on just how to work these all three together. But basically, this is how you go from Telegraph to Influx to Grafana. And this is how you kind of connect them all together. Hopefully, this was relatively straightforward. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is if you want to learn more, you can always go to InfluxDB University. This is completely free. It's got on-demand courses. We have a wide range of options here that allow you to learn all about Influx, you know, go forward. We also have specifically things like the Telegraph Basics. And I think we also have a more advanced Telegraph one. If you uh, go over here to Topics and you click on Data Collection, you'll see all of the Telegraph options because for the most part, we focus quite heavily on Telegraph. So yeah, including how to build your own Telegraph uh, plugin. So yeah, hopefully you can go ahead and learn from this. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us on Slack or you can comment here on YouTube. But 
Slack is probably the best place to get questions answered, and yeah, hope you enjoyed the tutorial.